This lecture has been made available to you courtesy of the American Numismatic Society. Uh, this is actually something uh, really new because as far as I know and as far and now the speakers <clears throat> will let us know, this is the first digitized collection from Sicilian museums. So this is really something really, really new. So I'll, uh, I will then, of course, leave the stage to our speakers, uh, but I'll briefly introduce them. Uh, Professor Lavinia Sole is a lecturer at the University of Palermo, Sicily, where she teaches ancient numismatics. She's one of the world's foremost experts in archaeology and numismatics of Western Sicily, and she has extensively published on the subject. She's also the scientific director of the project Numi Digitali. This project, as we will hear in the next hour or so, aims to digitize the important numismatic collection of the Archaeological Museum of Palermo, Antonino Salinas. Uh, Dr. Dario Giuffrida, who is also here with us, is an archaeologist of the Italian Research Council and a junior researcher at the University of Messina, Sicily. He specializes in archaeometry and in the, and among other things, also the creation of digital databases and tridimensional digital models of archaeological objects. And he collaborates with Professor Sole um, to the project Numi Digitali. So we, I'm now, so please uh, uh, join me welcoming our two speakers and uh, the stage uh, is for the two of you, uh, Dr. Professor Sole and Dr. Giuffrida. Thank you. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Lucia, for your kind words and for inviting me to participate at the Long Table program. I am very pro proud of this and I am very happy to be here to present uh, together with Dario Giuffrida the new Digitali project for the Archaeological Museum Salinas of Palermo. Do you see my screen? Dario? Yes. Okay. Yeah. The Numi Digitali project uh, aims to promote the research to improve management and expand the access to the numismatic collection at the Museum Salinas of Palermo, closed to the public for 70 years. To achieve this goal, the project has uh, produced an open source digital database that utilizes high resolution images and 3D renderings. The project was born in 2022 as part of a POM research and innovation 2014 to 2020, funding to support the research activities of the numismatics chair of the University of Palermo, coordinated by me, scientific curator of the project. The main partners of Numi Digitali are the Regional Archaeological Museum Salinas in Palermo, which keeps the numismatic collection, and uh, Web Genesis SPA system integrator, which took care of technological coordination. Furthermore, we made use of the precious collaboration of the four Italian research institutes, the Institute for Chemical Physical Processes of the CNR of Messina, responsible for creation of the 3D models, the Department of Chemical and Biological Sciences and Technologies Pharmaceuticals of the University of Palermo, which carried out the metallographic analysis, and the Central Institute for Cataloging and Documentation of the Ministry of Culture, ICCD. 
The ICCD played an important real role because it validated our data sheet for the cataloging of coins and guided us in preparing our database to provide the data to the only national database for cultural heritage, CJEC Web, and to share data according to the linked open data paradigm. The main objectives envisaged by the project were completed at the end of 2023 and involved the creation of a digital database in open format, which at the moment has only been aligned with the national cataloging standards of the ICCD, the connection of database with the web through the front end that guarantees public accessibility to the collection and the release uh, at the address uh, numidigitali.it. During 2024, however, the database will be implemented, favoring the entry of data from coins published in various studies, including 19th century ones, which lack a systematic collection and scientific updates. The database has two interfaces with, uh, with the different structure in the relation to the different functions. The backend reserved for searching and data set entry and the front end accessible to the public. The backend tool was modeled on the structure and ontology of the SCEDA new, a special data sheet for cataloging ancient coins released by the ISCD in 2004, which still maintains the original configuration. We can define the SCEDA new as a numismatic description scheme for the data collection of a coin based on ICCD cataloging standards similar to the needs of the nomisma.org network. The layout is composed of many sections organized hierarchically and divided into subsections and fields that can be filled in and require specific vocabularies formalized by the ISCD. However, the adaptation of the ICCD standards to the Salinas Museum database immediately highlighted the need to make a change to the data sheet. In fact, the project required a flexible cataloging base adaptable to the numismatic heritage of Salinas Museum, which preserves coins from historical collections and coins from archaeological excavations. To this end, we resorted for the flexibility of the SCEDA new, whose obligations are actually limited to some fields. A reasoned study was therefore carried out to prepare the changes oriented on the one hand towards the elimination of non-mandatory and non-essential fields for the analysis of the coins, and on the other, towards the inclusion of essential fields, but not included in the SCADANU. The operation presupposed interaction with the ICCD technicians so that the necessary adjustments did not compromise data sharing on the national CJEC web platform. 
at the end, all the proposed customizations were validated by the ICCD and the final product, which we usually call Scheda Nu Plus, was published and made available to the scientific community. The IT transposition of the SCADA New Plus was therefore incorporated into backend and was also accompanied by specific tools uh, to facilitate and speed up compilation. The structure of the database, however, was designed to be modifiable in the future in view of the advancement of the research and the IT evolution. The Skeden Plus is made up of 18 sections in total and by uh, clicking on each one, the related fields appear, which can be filled using the suggestions or using the drop down menu, which offers choice options based on the vocabularies of the Scheda New. Furthermore, the vocabularies are stored during data entry, thus simplifying the work of the compiler, who is guided in the interpretation of the labels and, and in the selection of the words. I will uh, now I will now show you in a concise way the structure of the Scheda New Plus. The first two sections, codes and other codes, codici ed altri codici, collect numbers and letters which together form the identification code of each Scheda New Plus. Those that do not require modification have become fixed fields. The section called object, oggetto, instead presents the object type catalog, which can be a coin, a premonetary instrument, a token, etc. The other fields provide information on the denomination. On the series the coin belongs uh, to, for example, Greek or Roman. On the classification according to the main scientific repertoires and whether the coin is actually present in the collections or has been lost and therefore only the archive documentation is available as frequently happens in historical museum collections. Finally, a field informs on the particularities of the coin, for example, if the coin is an imitation or is subrated, and any changes subsequent to the issue, for example, uh, the overstriking. Three sections Three sections, sorry, are dedicated to administrative data. In administrative geographical location section, localizzazione geografica amministrativa, you will find the name of uh, the museum and the precise deposit box where the coin is kept. Um, in patrimonial uh, data section, dati patrimoniali, you will find the inventory number of the coin and its economic value. And at the end of the list, in the legal condition and the constraints section, Condizione giuridica vincoli, the legal procedures for acquiring the coin and the owner of the coin are indicated. In the case of the Salinas Numismatic Collection, the owner is the Sicily region, as Sicily is a region with autonomous statute. In the section called Other Administrative Geographic Locations, Altre Localizzazioni Geografico-Amministrativi, 
However, there is a data on the historical locations of the coin prior to the current place of conservation. The location type field, tipo di localizzazione, gives immediate information on historical location. In fact, the compiler will insert the item place of discovery luogo di reperimento if the coin comes from an archaeological investigation and will insert the item place of origin, luogo di provenienza, if the coin belonged to a collection. The suggestions next to the field label help the compiler choose the most suitable entry. Topographical specifications on historical locations are found in the following subsections. The subsection with the economy PRC concerns only the coins from previous collections whose name and the location are indicated. The drop down menu descendings from PRCM field contains a complete vocabulary with all the names of the numismatic collection documented in Salinas to facilitate information insertion. That subsection PRV instead concerns also the coins found in the excavation because it provides information on the precise location of discovery and can incorporate links for georeferencing. The finding methods section, modalità di reperimento, is dedicated to the data of the archaeological context of the coins. This is a section that has undergone numerous implementations, as in the original 2004 Scheda New, there were few fields dedicated to the context. In particular, there are three subsections, survey, i cognizioni, excavation data that he discovered and other investigations to be filled in alternatively depending on the method of coins discovery. In the survey and excavation data subsections, new fields have been added to qualify the area of discovery of the coin. Arenimento, for example, settlement, sacred area, necropolis, and the nature of discovery, natura di invenimento, for example, single coin, or while only in the excavation data subsections, we will also find the fields to specify the type of laying, giacitura, the name of essay, saggio of the building, structure, environment, functional unit or funerary deposition where the coin was found. The new fields are identified by the URI consisting of the acronym of the related structured fields, the abbreviation new, and the progressive Arabic number. A specific subsection with additional fields was created for the stratigraphic unit, since the simple field of the Scheda new appeared insufficient to contain all the stratigraphic information of a contextual numismatic study. The additional fields instead allow uh, you to insert more precise information, for example, the uh, character characterizations of a stratigraphic unit. The list of contextual and diagnostic materials and the chronological indica indications deriving from the context. One section is dedicated to chronology, referring to the century 
or the ear, one to the identification of the engravers of the dice, and one to the technical data of the coin. The analytical data section has also been implemented. It included the fields for the description of the type, for the transcription of the inscriptions in various languages, for information on the issuing authority, the monetary magistrates, mint, and the countermarks. The additions instead concerned both the subsection for further information on the overstriking and in particular particular on the description of the under type and the subsection for testing, not covered in the body of the original Skedanu. Three important sections follow. The first two sections called the conservation and the restoration and analysis document and the integrity, the eligibility on of the coin and the mechanical um, or physical analysis carried out on the exemplar. Instead, in the third section sources and reference documents, it's possible to upload images of the observe and reverse, but also bibliography, both specific in case the coin has already been published and comparative essential for unpub unpublished coins. The type, uh, the type of data access is made explicit in the section of the same name, data access, while the name of the compilers, the scientific curator and the official responsible for the museum are found in the compilation section. Other observations can be transcribed in the notations. In the back end, it's also possible to carry out searches using the search button, which uses the subsection containing the most useful data for scientific study. The Oh, so the uh, adoption of national cataloging rules guarantees the inclusion of the new digital data sets in CJEC Web, a platform managed by ICCD for the sharing of public cultural heritage data sets. CJEC Web guarantees the correct and protected circulation of information and is destined to be saved from obsolescence. Furthermore, the release in open format according to the linked open data paradigm is also envisaged, especially for the additional fields which exclusively characterize the Schedanu Plus for these new fields, it was necessary to create specific ontologies thanks to the collaboration between the ICCD and the Institute for, of Sciences and the Technologies of Cognition of the CNR for the transposition of the cataloging descriptive experience of the ICCD into the new paradigm of the semantic web. To allow the provision in CJEC Web and according to the LOD paradigm, whole data has been formatted in XML, adding a tag to additional fields which will only be provided in LOD format. As on open source database, Numi Digitali guarantees the publication of, uh, the, of its dataset in compliance with the FI princi uh, principles, 
okay? Findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable data. Another strong point of the project is the correspondence between the database and the front end connected to, on, to the web, whose interface has been structured to be user friendly. In the front end, the user has the possibility of viewing the SCADA new in the short format following a selection of the fields to be displayed and the varied displayed of some labels originally poorly suited to understanding by the user. The front-end tool also offers the possibility of carrying out searches by selecting an item and entering a keywords and gives the opportunity a two request museum to provide the complete version of the data sheet and the related images of the coins after completing a specific form. The requests will arrive in a special space in the backend through which the museum will be able to view and process them. Particular attention was paid to images of the coins with high resolution and large size in order to capture the details. Some are in 2D, others have been rendered in 3D and in augmented form as they are equipped with points of interest, which refer to specific hypertext and or multimedia. The points of interest offer brief information regarding the history of the coin, its intrinsic elements, and its metallic composition, known through metallographic analysis carried out with XR phi spectroscopy. The unconditional diffusion of images on the web is inhibited by a series of VT measures, such as the impossibility of saving, copying, and pasting, showing another page or tab, as well as by the superposition of a protection QR code with reference to copyright notes. The Numigi Digitali project, therefore, allows the Salinas to be, at the moment, the first museum in Italy in possession of a digital numismatic database accessible on the web, like those of other European and American institutions, equally accessible, interoperable, and respectful of accredited cataloging standards, such as the one proposed by the numisma.org network. For the near future, thanks to the interest of the University of Palermo in the project, further developments of the portal are planned, including the semantic alignment of a cataloging standard with the nomisma.org ontology. Thank you very much for your attention and for tolerating my bad English. Thank you. Uh, now, Dario Giuffrida, researcher at the CNR of Messina, will show you the methodologies used for the creation of the 3D models of the coins. In this presentation, I will illustrate the work carried out by the Institute for Chemical and Physical Processes of the Italian National Research Council, placed in Messina, within the NUMI Digitali project. Our contribution focused on the 3D metric survey of the numismatic artifacts and the integration of the final 3D model into the database cards on the website. Uh, digitizing small objects like uh, coins poses unique methodological challenges because capturing precise geometry and high resolution surface textures uh, requires extremely high precision tools. 
To address this uh, challenge, we have developed an innovative solution that integrates two complementary techniques, laser scanning for geometry and macro photogrammetry for realistic surface texture. Laser scanning is a range-based survey uh, technique that directly measures 3D coordinate points, capturing every minute topological detail with metric accuracy. However, geometry alone does not convey uh, the full beauty of the coins. So we implemented uh, photogrammetry, which is an image-based technique uh, that uses algorithm to uh, triangulate photos taken from different angles into uh, and turn uh, them into a textured 3D model. Our methodology involved a multi-step process, including the selecting optimal acquisition parameters, acquiring laser scan and photos, processing data from, from both methods, integrating uh, laser scanning and uh, photogrammetric models, uploading the final model to Sketchfab Online Viewer, adding interactive point of interest uh, inside the, uh, the coin, embedding models into the web application to make the artifact accessible online. Uh, for laser scanning, we use a structured light uh, scanner typically used in high precision industrial metrology. This technology was innovatively applied for cultural heritage digitization. Uh, it worked by projecting a pattern of light onto the surface of the objects, while sensor uh, detects distortion to precisely triangulate the 3D coordinates and reconstruct the, uh, the shape of the object. The scanner can capture up to 8 million points per scan from a distance of about 50 centimeters, enabling detailed and fast digitization of the coins. Um, to set up the mobile scanning lab inside the Salinas coin room, the instrument was mounted on a tripod with a rotating stage and printed targets. Each coin was then fixed uh, vertically on the rotating stage and horizontally rotated during the scan uh, through uh, a full rotation. The coin was then flipped over and scanned again from the opposite side. The presence of uh, printed aligned targets helped align the two scans into a complete uh, 3D model. <clears throat> Since the laser scanning 3D model lacks a realistic uh, color and texture, we supplemented it with photogrammetry. Our photographic setup included a, a Canon EOS 6D camera fixed on a tripod, a, a 60 macro lens, millimeters macro lens, to get a high magnification and capture every small detail or imperfection in our coin, and a turntable with printed markers placed uh, at a known distance for alignment checks. Uh, for acquisition, the coins were placed on uh, uh, the turntable and 16 uh, uh, high resolution photos were taken for each side of the coin, uh, rotating uh, so the, the object uh, of uh, 22.5 degree per shot. So uh, 32 photos were captured in total for each coin. <clears throat> For laser scanning data processing, we used uh, a software DOM Inspect Pro on site to clean and align scan into a 3D mesh. For photogrammetry, we use Agisoft MetaShape off site to process uh, images into textured 3D models. 
While laser scanning immediately outputs the final 3D model, photogrammetry requires more post-processing steps as aligning photos, generating a dense point cloud, creating 3D mesh and mapping texture. Finally, finally uh, this color texture map was overlaid on the precise laser geometry. To do this, the laser mesh was imported into the Metashape uh, software and aligned to the photogrammetry model using common point visible on the coin surface. Uh, once the uh, two uh, 3D models were placed in the same geometric reference, uh, we uh, regenerated we generated again the photo texture of the photogrammetry, obtaining a photorealistic model, which includes accurate geometry and uh, uh, high details in the, um, the um, realistic rendering. Um, the use of this combined technique enabled us to meet the methodological challenge of digitizing small objects like coin with high metric precision and at the same time obtaining realistic texture. The final models were exported from Metashape to 3DS format and uploaded to the Sketchfab web platform. A dedicated uh, project profile was created for Mini Digitali to contain all coin spacements. The Sketchfab viewer provides more than a basic 3D model visualization. It enables interactive editing of textures, background, lighting, rotation through a simple drop down menu. So user can optimize and customize the 3D models for specific purposes. Sketchfab most valuable feature is inserting uh, interactive annotation as a point of interest on the 3D model surface, linking them to text, images, or other multimedia. This provides information about specific areas, enabling an engagement, engaging and uh, narrated experience around the 3D artifacts. Final user can simply click annotation to access images, video links, and other contextual information. This multimedia integration expands the 3D models into an educational platform. Uh, another key feature is that, uh, that Sketchfab can generate uh, embed codes to directly integrate models into a web page using an iframe. Simply copying the HTML code, uh, insert the full interactive viewer in our web page. This made uh, Sketchfab well suited for incorporating the interactive coin models into the uh, web application created by Web Genesis which integrates also uh, the, um, the, the, the 3D database. The results is a sort of uh, digital museum uh, of the Salinas coin where user can explore this historical treasure with an unprecedented level of detail while accessing uh, descript descriptive information. By scanning the QR code, uh, you can view the interactive 3D coin model on, also on your smartphone. This uh, demonstrates the capabilities for remote study and engagement with these historical uh, artifacts. Uh, in conclusion, the Numi Digitali project uh, pioneered an innovative uh, 3D digitization methodology, uh, combining industrial metrology scanning and photogrammetry to create a highly detailed model of Salinas Museum coins. 
while the inserting of multimedia uh, enable augmented exploration, expanding also public access. Overall, the project highlights the state of art uh, digitization technique and integration to unlock new discoveries uh, around museum artifacts and shaping the future of how people can connect uh, with our uh, history. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Uh, I want to thank also my uh, team. In, uh, thank you very much, uh, really. This is uh, incredibly interesting. Uh, for now, I have... Uh, uh, I open the floor to discussion. I have already two questions that are uh, for uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Jufrida. And then uh, I have, of course, other questions myself too. So one uh, is from uh, Daniel Wolf. Uh, what is the resolution of 3D scanning? For example, uh, on a coin of uh 20 millimeters diameter how many 3d points are obtained oh, okay we have uh, about uh, 16 uh, million points because for each scan we op we can obtain up to uh, 8 million points per scan so at maximum resolution we can get uh, about 16 uh, million points per scan. Then uh, the resolution in the um, is uh, sub millimeters. Uh, we have a precision of uh, a sub millimeter precision in this kind of uh, of scan. Thank we, can, you. we can uh, we can see uh, from yes this uh, slide is uh, representative for the quality this is the the resolution of the the scanner we have eight million points per scan with a point spacing of 0 0.04 up to 0 0.15 millimeters. That's fantastic. We have other questions uh, actually from you, from uh, uh, Chris. During the photography of the coins, what methods did you use to ensure an accurate 3D model given their uh, reflectiveness and specularity. So uh, the metrology was uh, uh, controlled by the use of uh, uh, printed um, printed markers, which was um, were placed on the scene, and each of these points was. Uh, um, uh, captured by the uh, laser scan, the laser scanning, and then the uh, texture uh, acquired by photographic acquisition was uh, um, aligned to that point. So we uh, uh, we obtained the uh, metric accuracy of laser scanning system and the uh, realistic texture applied on our model, which was corrected uh, from the metric point of view with the uh, laser scanning uh, system. Thank you. We have another question from Eric Cross. In constructing 3D images, uh, how uh, is the correct alignment between obverse and reverse ensured? Yeah, also in this case, uh, the correct alignment between the uh, verse and obverse is guaranteed by 
the laser scanning system because uh, when we uh, acquired the coin with uh, by uh, laser scanning system we uh, put the coin uh, in a, a vertical position so we have the exactly metrica metric uh, parameters from the scan while uh, during the photographic acquisition we uh, put the coin uh, horizontal in uh, horizontal um, horizontally uh, so it's the same um, uh, answer uh, uh, that uh, um, this uh, marker point this uh, control point uh, guarantee can guarantee the accuracy between the uh, obverse and the verse merging inside uh, in during uh, the alignment uh, process um, the slide uh, uh, show uh, this because we put these uh, uh, control points and align the geometry with the uh, 3D texture. Okay. Um... So we have another question. I mean, uh, there is a request from uh, uh, Marina Fischer who wanted to see the next slide again, which I think is the one after what you were showing the method they were using. But then uh, Lavinia, as a Professor Sol has already, has already answered to the question of uh, the um multilingual because it is uh, only in uh, uh in italian and here there is another question for dr jufrida from jamie gray the last speaker showed two striking points one oh, oh okay i don't see it anymore okay so i don't see the question anymore i don't i don't know if the speaker wants to ask it uh, directly because I don't see it anymore. Maybe. You know, that one is uh, to Lavinia, so I should be able to. The last uh, yeah. showed two striking coins, one of a bearded man's face on an animal bull's body and another with a rabbit or hare leaping over a man's face and profile. Can you talk a bit about those two coins? Yeah. Yes. Okay, which is the question I... Yeah, they want to know more about this coin. Where is this coin from? And uh, what kind of access? Uh, I guess they want to know how you're going to access all also this multimedia. Yes, so, you know, I, yeah. can show, I can show you the, the coin from the, mm -hmm. the database. Mm -hmm. This is a coin from uh, uh, Messina. Mm -hmm. And in this section of the database, we can access the 3D model. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. And we can also observe the time, wow. the time of the photogrammetric texture. Wow. We have this uh, this point 
which uh, give information about the iconographic representation of, in the coin. Wow. Ah, so uh, we also uh, make some um, X, uh, X ray fluorescence, fluorescence analysis on the coin which uh, gives information about the, uh, the quantity of uh, uh, silver um, in, inside the coin. And we have here the spectrum, which show the quantity of silver, which is in the metal. We, And then in uh, this point, we can see uh, the information about uh, the Messina, the, the city where this coin was uh, uh, okay. um. I didn't know if you can see the the tail. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty fantastic. And this is not the full resolution because to uh, see it quickly in a web application, we we had to reduce the dimension of the file. So this is not the, the real full resolution. <laughs> it is a low uh, export, exportation of the model. And this is all accessible through the portal Numidigit. Yes. So it is amazing. Yeah, yeah. And the idea is that, as Professor Sole was saying, that all of these um, will be then uh, linked uh, to Nomisma, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because uh, and uh, if, if you uh, scan this QR code, you can access the full database. Okay or uh, copy the link. We'll see this then. But um, also one thing that is important uh, is that for now, uh, this is, for example, the images. Uh, I, I, I can uh, actually was, I was very easy to access it. So fantastic. But um, so, but these images are not, uh, we get, it's not possible to down uh, to download them at the moment, right? No, I mean... no, no. It is not possible to download, and the database has a, a specific section uh, where you can uh, fill a, a form to. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, to have the to ask the yes to ask the that full data uh, from the museum. Okay, I have uh, a question from uh, Marta Barbato, who asks uh, how many record coins are online at the moment. I know that Professor Sole has answered to me uh, privately about this. So, but could you uh, answer all, please? Uh, ask Professor uh, Sole, because they are already like 20,000 already online. Yeah, uh, I think um, this, now we have about uh, 20 uh, coins available. 20? Yes, with the 3D model. Yeah. Okay. But the whole collection is about 20,000 objects, no? That's yeah, yes, the, yes, the collection. Uh, yes, so uh, 
this is what you are uh, aiming uh, aiming to do basically so yeah. that's next uh, okay and what are uh, sorry that i ask you and what are the what is the timeline for this how long uh, i mean will this uh, take maybe uh, lavinia can answer uh, this question uh, because um uh, we are um, planning this uh, this work. Currently, mm -hmm. we are planning this work, but we are optimistic that in the last, uh, in the next uh, uh, one or two, two years, we can uh, cover the wall collection. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. So uh, we have a lot of, uh, uh, of course, compliments uh, for all of you, uh, for the two of you. So thank you, really. This is a fantastic project. We are super interested. And of course, you are pioneers in Italy of this project. So this is thank fantastic. You. And uh, so thank you very 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 much and uh for 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 being really with uh with us today and sharing uh, with us uh, uh your project this is thank fantastic uh, thank, thank you, you very much for uh, uh, this opportunity to show our work